Hello and welcome. This is uh, Comscope's Facebook Live. I'm Joe Deppa, the Corporate Communications Manager in Hickory, North Carolina, and I'd like to welcome, to you, welcome you to our latest Facebook Live. This week we're going to be featuring Fiber in the Enterprise, and we have our good friend and man, the myth, the legend himself, uh -oh. Stephen Cowell, who's our Senior VP of Enterprise Sales. Stephen, welcome. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Hey, I hope I can live up to your man, the myth, the legend <laughs> expectations, right? So I'm a little, little worried about that, but I'm, uh, I'm real excited to be here talking about one of my favorite, well, two of my favorite topics, the, the enterprise and fiber. <laughs> As anybody who knows me knows I love those things. <laughs> so I think what we'll do, we'll, uh, Stephen, let's start off by tell me a little bit about your background and tell me how you got involved with, let's say, the, the industry and then how you joined Comscope. Yeah, so I was uh, fortunate that, you know, right out of school, I got to go work for a Two, two great companies. I got to work for American Express right out of school. I was in the, the networking world, so I did a lot more with servers and technology like that. Um, that was back when we were deciding to use Type 1 cabling or this newfangled UTP cabling, right? So it was a long time ago, guys. I'm showing my age on that one. It's good to look, have a little history behind that's it. That's right. That's right. And then I got to go to Intel, a progressive company with uh, you know lots of technology. And then I'm I was asked, you know, to, to interview for this job, this this salesperson job at this uh, company that did structured cabling. I'd always used it, uh, but I joined up with Comscope. At the time, it was Lucent, then we became uh, Avaya, and then we were bought by Comscope. So I've uh, I've been with the company about 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've uh, held jobs that were field sales jobs. I've held uh, global account jobs. I've been fortunate enough to live overseas for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I uh, got to come back. And I led our global partner organization. So I hope we have a lot of partners on out there. Um, join us. You, you know how I feel about partners. And then a year ago, I was asked to lead our enterprise sales organization. So uh, that's kind of my uh, you know, 30 years in the industry, 20 years with Comscope uh, history there. Great. It's a great, it's a great way to start you know, our discussion here. And, and also, if you, if you were on my last Facebook Live, I do have to admit, we had issues with the microphone. I'm hoping we're not having issues with the microphone this time. I uh, hope you hear me loud and clear. So I've, I've tweaked a little thing, uh, some of the things. So first of all, apologize for the last time, but hopefully it's all rectified this time. So also, before we, before we go on and start talking about fiber in the enterprise, I want everybody to know that if you do have questions, please put them on the comment section. I do have my my uh, qu my laptop here, so I'll be able to see the questions, and we'll be able to share them with Stephen as we go on. So, Stephen, you know, as we as we you know talk about again, the topic here is fiber fiber in the enterprise. You know, fiber is such a hot topic, and t uh, you know, with campus networks and data centers and this and that. I said, tell me some of, some of the insights that you can provide us. You know, especially with fiber and and deploying more fiber in their network and why IT managers and companies and you know. Uh, you know, just the gamut, you know, should should be starting to consider more fiber, and why, why should they be considering fiber? Yeah, Joe, I'll tell you, the, the number one reason I think, um, you know, fiber is being deployed more heavily within networks is just the sheer number of devices, mm -hmm. right? If you if you look back historically, we had a, a computer and a phone and uh, you know, some printers and things like that, but, you know, right now, whether it's wired or wireless, the number of devices that are being aggregated through a building and a data center yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, kind of a uh, low throughput sensor, uh, high bandwidth server or workstation, security cameras, AV, mm -hmm. um, security, um, badge swipes. You know, everything out there is getting connected in, to the network. Well, that causes a problem right. because what do we do with that? How do we get it out? It's got to get down to a server room. It's got to get off campus, and uh, you don't want to be a bottleneck. So mm -hmm. this dependency on fiber continues to grow in the building. And then in the data center, we care a lot about things like latency. Mm -hmm. We care a lot about densification and the ability to move quickly as new technologies come out. So uh, fiber is, you know, especially multi-mode fiber within the data center. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's very important that we have that. So IT managers, whether it be for a building, the campus, or the data mm -hmm. center, you know, they care greatly about that, and uh, it's something that we've got to all pay a lot more attention to as, mm -hmm. as we move forward. And I think we're seeing that more and more, especially with the younger generations. You know, they're the ones that are getting on all these devices now. Look, I mean, I, I have a laptop, I have an iPad, I have, you know, two iPhones, my wife and myself, and I just, just the connected, you know, connected to smart TVs, yep. you know, you have that. But as you see now more with the, the younger generation, especially the millennials and the Gen Z, Everything is done, mo mo you know, through a mobile mobile I'm device. Not, I mean, it's. I'll give you a funny story about that. So uh, we were interviewing um, 
for some inside sales roles that we had here. And uh, we're interviewing folks just out of college. Mm -hmm. And um, we had them go research a little bit about Comscope and tell us what excited them. And uh, this one gentleman came in and he was uh, being interviewed and he said, uh, I'm real excited about working with you guys because you can solve a big problem for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's that? He goes, I'm a gamer. He says, the latency, you know, to go back, you know, he plays Fortnite or something like that. He says, uh, if we can slow that down, it could be more real time in my, in my house. So think about it. They're sitting in their house. They all know about latency, right? right, right. I'm, I'm be honest with you. When I was growing up, I didn't know about latency, right? But I don't these, think anybody did. These guys coming yeah. out of college, they, they pay attention to it every right. day. Yeah, right. I mean, it's so, it's, so, it's so ingrained in their system and, right. and their lifestyles that, you know, as soon as they wake up, they pick up their phone, you know? They're on their phone constantly. They're buying movie tickets. They're buying, you know, they're doing online banking. They're doing, and especially video and data, the way they're sending it back and forth that way. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's the, the capacity, and that's that's the whole thing about the fiber, the, and handling that additional capacity that's in right. the networks and things like that. So, um, you know, one of the things that we've also heard a lot about, you know, and, and you know, maybe actually, let me go back more on the history side about, you know, when did we start seeing that push for fiber, you know, pushing more fiber because of that increased bandwidth. When do we, when do you think we kind of started seeing something like that? You know, I, I feel like it's it's always been there, but it's been different orders of magnitude, mm -hmm. right? Um, back when I was an end user, you know, you would run a fiber cable, 24 fibers to every communications room, and then you, you'd be copper out. But the copper out tended to be 10 megabit, 100 right. megabit. So what you aggregated back, you know, it really wasn't much. Well, now some of the devices in, this, in the data centers required. So as we bring higher bandwidths further out, mm -hmm. that aggregation of that data in the core back out to the service provider, that, that has increased dramatically. But one of the big things that I think changed outside of the enterprise mm -hmm. is um, getting the content closer to the customer. Mm -hmm. So our service provider customers are dealing with a, um, a pretty big problem today. So if you're a Netflix, if you're one of these content providers out there, you need to get that content as close out to the, the consumer as you can. Correct. <clears throat> and really the best way to do that is uh, you know, through fiber, right? And, and people demand, you know, when we're at home and something spools and we're watching Netflix, it ruins the experience for right. us, right? We are, you know, back in the day, you, you'd spool a little bit, you were still amazed that you right. were connected to some mainframe somewhere. It is not, uh, a luxury anymore. Right, exactly. It, it, it must be real time. Right, and, and we've even seen that even in the commercial lately That's where somebody true. was going to do a picture for on a cake and they took a picture of their daughter and they gave it to the, I don't know if you saw it, but they took a picture of their daughter or child and they gave it to the baker. And he want, they wanted the person's pic, the, the child's picture on the cake, but it was still buffering. So he ended up putting the image Pixelated. of the buffer. The pixel, Pixelated. they put that up yeah. there, you know. Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, so everybody's that. expecting that yeah. that instant instant gratification. Yeah. You know, also, um, you know, so that that's great. That's great background on that. But let, let's also talk about, you know, as the industry continues to evolve, um, one of the things that we're definitely seeing are new standards, you know, for fiber and in IT, you know, such as OM5, which is also known as wideband multimode fiber. You know, that's becoming now, you know, the new standard for that and providing a, a point of convergence for Wi-Fi, you know, not just, and it's not just data centers, but it's also providing that in-building wireless, you know, solutions and, and Wi-Fi. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, remember I always say, this, this is my comment today, there is no wireless without wire. That's correct. First of all, that's what we say today. But I think we're going to be saying tomorrow is there is no wireless without fiber. Mm -hmm. Right, because what you're seeing is today's modern Wi-Fi solutions or even the in-building wireless mm -hmm. RF solutions, they're bringing more bandwidth out. We're becoming more dependent on it. The densification in Wi-Fi networks has gone up dramatically. Mm -hmm. So what that means, we have more users attaching to it. So we've got to, the number one goal with wireless is to get it off the wireless as soon as possible, right. onto wire, back out to the, uh, you know, where it's trying to communicate to. Mm -hmm. So... You know, you can do that in, in many ways, right? If you're going long haul back to the service provider, that's probably single mode. Mm -hmm. uh, big, big campuses building the building, that can be single mode again. Mm -hmm. But within the building, within these shorter distances, say, you know, up to you know, 500 meters or so, uh, maybe, maybe a little longer than that in the kilometers, you would really like to use multi-mode fiber, mm -hmm. right? Because when you look at the cost of the transceivers, you know, on both ends, the optical fiber, and the connectors, panels, cords, mm -hmm. the complete cost of ownership for a multi-mode solution is still lower. Right. So, you know, Comscope 
was a pioneer in the launching of the first OM5 or the wideband multimode solution mm -hmm. that you, you spoke about earlier. Uh, we're real proud of that and it's really helped us make sure that we're able to bring additional capacity, we could do additional distances, mm -hmm. and uh, we can support 40 and 100 gig you know, out to uh, greater distances than we ever before, ever before over uh, duplex fiber backbones. Mm -hmm. It also allows us, the, the new OM5 standard, to have a cost-effective upgrade path for this converged wireless network, okay. right? I mean, we're not gonna become less dependent on wireless. Right. You know, the, uh, my son just hates that when we go out, his Wi-Fi connection doesn't work in the car, <laughs> right? And he tells my, my wife, hey, I would like to use dad's phone or dad's iPad because it's LTE connected. He right. is seven years old, Joe. <laughs> he wants the LTE connected <laughs> device, right? So he's a, uh, He's, he's pretty smart when it comes to that, yeah. but, but again, it's, um, it's, it's going to become where we seamlessly need to be able to transition from wired to wireless, right. um, the, the non-regulated um, Wi-Fi solutions mm -hmm. into the um, regulated RF solution, um, spectrum. Mm -hmm. it, it's just got to happen seamlessly, and, and as we become more dependent on it, you know, the the expectation again of how fast and how seamless this is mm -hmm. is going to grow and fiber is going to be core to that and we think the uh, the uh, OM5 solution is, is the best way to handle that within the campus. Gotcha. Actually we do have a question here which is great and I think you kind of answered this but maybe you can explain a little bit more. It's, uh, we have a question here for Bill. He said, uh, can you actually explain what multimode fiber is? I, I know what you kind of did, but maybe yeah. you want to just go back yeah. one more no, time. On so uh, really when um, you know, fiber is, is glass, it's mm -hmm. the, you know, we, we transmit light down a piece of glass and um, that's how we do data transmission. Mm -hmm. Pulses of lights on and off and it's, it's sent and there's a receiver on the other end. We traditionally talk about that in two ways. Mm -hmm. There's a multimode fiber where we use many different modes of light mm -hmm. to transmit down a glass. Now the core of that glass tends to be bigger. It uh, tends to be 62.5 or 50 micron. Mm -hmm. That is used for, I'd say, not as long a distance, right? And it uses an LED to transmit this light. Mm -hmm. If you look at single mode fiber, this is going to take a laser pixel. So when I talked about the fact that one is less expensive than the other, I mean, think about an LED light bulb cost today, and then if we're actually going to go to Home Depot and buy a laser, it'd probably right. be pretty darn expensive, right? Um, but the laser light will go further, right? So okay. if we're going to go back to a central office, we're going to go many miles with it, we're probably going to use a single mode, but due to cost and the enterprise setup, we would we would tend to be multimode. Gotcha. All right. You know, one thing you were talking about were, you know, um, deploying the, the, the OM fiber and also just fiber in, in the, you know, the campus settings and <coughs> office buildings. And, you know, a lot of things, something we're also hearing a lot about are smart cities and smart buildings. And how is how is fiber playing a, a role in, in those areas? Yeah, so I don't think fiber is just playing a role. I think it is absolutely critical to a smart building or a smart city. It mm -hmm. is the foundation of what happens there. And I, I think first what we should do, Joe, is we should look at what is a smart city, what is a smart building, right? Because we've been talking about connected cities, connected buildings, intelligent buildings. We've been talking about these things for quite a while. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's become very mainstream today to talk about it, and I think it's important for us to kind of level set what I think it is. When we talk about smart, you know, I talked about all these devices going into buildings. The same thing's happening in the cities. Right. And what are these devices doing? Why are we putting them out there? We're putting them out there because they're collecting data, right? There's, there's sensors in, your, in this office for occupancy, for temperature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got humidity. We've got all of these things um, that we're collecting data on. Security, door open, door right. closed. Well, when you take this data on its own, it, it doesn't make a building smart. Mm -hmm. What makes a building or a city smart is that you're able to take in this data, aggregate it up, and start making some decisions off of it. Okay. And we can make decisions off of it, then you can, you can instruct things downstream to do something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we look at a, a building, you know, the number of IT devices in there, again, wired and wireless, are, are going up so much every right. single day, in our, even in our homes, mm -hmm. right? But, all the time those, those are going up. It's gonna drive an increased demand for fiber. But when we look out at the Smart City right. Initiative, right, they're putting sensors out for security, for safety, for energy. Um, you know, these types of things, public safety, transportation, all of those types of things are now become a mission critical. Right, right, right. In the city. And so
right, we're going to have to move this further out to the edge. Mm -hmm. And some people refer to it as edge data centers. Some people refer to it as uh, fog computing. Right, you know, right, there's, right. A lot of, there's a lot of words for this. But because of the way the architecture is going to be in the smart cities, it's going to take a lot more fiber. Because, again, remember, we talk about latency. Latency is I can't have a delay. Right. right? I don't want to have a delay. So in the cities, we're going to need uh, you know, a lot more um, fiber to support that, um, all of the computing, everything that gets done. And, and, and think about a car. Like, you know, we all want these autonomous cars. Well, maybe we don't. I enjoy driving. I do, but, too. Uh, I'll be a honest. Lot, a lot I, of people, I enjoy the long drives. Right. I enjoy, you know, the old, sun, the old Sunday, Sunday afternoon That's drive. Right. Can we all see Joe in his old car? The old, yeah, driving, Model T. Driving down. <laughs> um, but, you know, let's face it. There's going to be more autonomous things happening right. inside of cars. And so could you imagine if the car had to talk to an antenna who had to go back to a local data center mm -hmm. and the processing had to happen and then it came back? By the time... That car decided if it should or shouldn't stop or if it should turn right or left, there's going to be an accident. Right. right. So we just can't do that. It's got to be a lot more real time and all the processing has to happen mm -hmm. further out. So, you know, everything's not going to be out at the, the edge. So this connection between the edge and the core mm -hmm. is going to have to be fiber. Right. Actually, we have another question. This is actually pretty good because it's kind of le uh, leaning towards what we were talking about, you know, you know, smart cities, smart uh, smart buildings, and also leading into the home. Uh, Richard actually asked the question: How do, how does faster fiber in the data center improve my day to day usage usage at home? Yeah, so that that's a good that's a good point. So, uh, I'm sorry, what was his name? Richard. All right, Richard. So here here's my view on, it, and I will tell you. Hopefully, you caught at the beginning of this. Uh, he introduced me as a sales guy. All right. <laughs> so uh, I we've got some real smart people here who could probably go much more further in depth of this, but from the Outside watching in, here's what I, I see. Today in a data center, it used to be that one server did one thing. It, does, it doesn't operate that anymore. Right. It used to have a mail server and a content server. Well, now everything's virtualized. Mm -hmm. So that as demand comes in, and Richard, I'll just use the example of Netflix that I used earlier, that content lives in many places. And these servers are talking to each other to load balance and mm -hmm. decide how to handle things and make decisions inside of the data center. And the more efficient that that data center can process your request, get the data that you need, right. and get it back out to you, means that your experience as a user is going to be better. Mm -hmm. So, Richard, from your home, you know, we need to have the fastest connection from your device mm -hmm. to your router in the house. You know, and that might be a wire. Probably it's Wi-Fi inside of your house. And then we're going to go out, out of your building. We're going to get to the central office. And then i got to process that data. As efficiently as they can do that and get it back out to you, your experience is going to be better. And that's that, that upstream, downstream, you know, that's, that's, that's what right. we're talking about that's there. Right. Um, and again, if you guys have any more questions, you know, please send them in. This has been a great topic and a great discussion we've had. And I think um, we'll, we'll ask um, Stephen one more question. And then if anything else, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking to wrap up. But I think one of the things that we kind of want to sum up here is how is Comscope helping its customers, you know, uh, evolve their networks using fiber? Yeah, so um, I think it's important that we take a look back, right? And the first thing I'd say is, Innovation. Mm -hmm. Comscope has always in this area innovated. Um, if you remember, I said I started 20 years ago. That would have put me in November of 1998 that I joined the company. And then just before that, Comscope announced a Laser Speed 300 solution. It was the industry's first laser optimized multimode fiber. It enabled, if you can believe this, everybody, one gigabit transmission over multimode fiber. And we were heroes back then in 1998, <laughs> if you can believe that. About two years, four years later, that became a standard. That became the OM3 standard. Uh, again, in 2003, we launched our TerraSpeed single mode fiber, and that was the industry's first zero water peak single mode fiber. Mm -hmm. it, it increased the, ba the, the wavelengths that we could use within that. It became a standard in 2006, so three years ago, of the OS2 standard. If you leapfrog forward a little bit more, 2004, we launched Laser Speed 550. So that was again a laser optimized multimode fiber. And uh, that took us out to 550 meters capability. It also increased the bandwidth that we could do. That became the OM4, the, the basis for the OM4 standard in 2009, right? So the standard was five years again behind us. And, you know, 2005, Method B, we can keep going on this, but we'll fast forward. You know, we recently launched uh, Method B Enhanced, which makes, right. it's part of our high speed migration portfolio. Mm -hmm. It uh, makes it to where the, the ability to deploy today's technologies with tomorrow's technologies mm -hmm. are, are much easier because you, you can just start switching out end pieces 
and getting faster and faster and faster, whether we go from single transmission, parallel transmission, multi-fiber transmission, we can handle that. Uh, most recently also I talked about that we pioneered the OM5 solution. So the first place that we help our customers, innovation, right? right? And we're gonna continue to do that, and we're real, real proud of that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, everybody out there, Facebook worlds, we're, 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 we're designing solutions. So you know you need to be more dependent on fiber, and uh, you want a company that's gonna stand behind what they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Comscope offers an applications assurance. And so let me just real quick say what that means is uh, almost every manufacturer out there, I would hope any reputable manufacturer out there would say, hey, I'm going to guarantee my product or manufacturer defect, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like your car. If it's broke out of the manufacturer, take it back to us, we'll fix it. Uh, what they don't do is they don't say, I guarantee your car will do 100 miles an hour. They, they, don't, they don't guarantee performance. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go look at applications and we say, all right, these applications we guarantee will run over our solution. You got to use our solution. We tell you how to put it together. We have a partner network out there that they put it in, and Comscope stands behind it. If it doesn't work, we're going to pay the product and labor to go out and fix it, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm a customer, I want to know that I'm with a company that is going to stand behind it. They didn't just start up a shop, right? Start terminating fiber, turn it out, and you go back to them in you know two, three, five years, they're gone, right? So you want a reputable company, and, and we we help with that. And then the final piece where I think, well, not the final, I, got call, I can talk about Comscope for a while, but <laughs> one of my, my favorite pieces is just as a salesperson that's out there trying to help customers solve problems, it's our solutions. It's what do we have. And I know this is a fiber talk, but here's what I'll say is, uh, you know, it could be wired or wireless. We've got solutions for that, right? It could be copper or fiber. We've got solutions for that. In the copper, it could be shielded or unshielded, right? And uh, you know, if it could be fiber, it could be multi-mode or single mode. We, we look at it, you know, you look at our trunk cables, we have uh, technologies of terminations in eight strand, 12 strand, 24 strand. That doesn't sound like a big deal, guys, but it, it really is because these parallel transmission applications that are coming, sometimes they're, uh, then eight is the best, and sometimes 12 is the best, and sometimes 24 for density and future proofing is the best. Why would you want to go with one company that, that didn't have all those off, those, uh, those, those solutions there. You look at the densities, you know, so we're not getting more space, we're getting less space right. to work with. So you wanna have the highest density solutions. Um, and then you look at, you put our automated infrastructure management over that. So now remember I said more things are dependent on fiber. Right. More things are gonna be mission critical out there for fiber. Um, you would not want someone to accidentally take down a virtual server or a, a a disk array or something that everybody's dependent on right. on accident. So we have these intelligent solutions that they automate the management of that. It's called our, our Envision solution. Mm -hmm. And now the standards are recognizing that too, Joe. They're, right. go, they're going out there saying, hey, we now recommend when you build a data center you have infrastructure management. Then, uh, you know, and then finally you heard me mention our partners earlier. I'm very passionate about our partners and, and there's a reason why. Most of our stuff doesn't come out of the box mm -hmm. and you just plug it in like a toaster. Right. That doesn't happen. Most stuff comes out, you need a good, reputable partner to work with. So Comscope has the Partner Pro Network, and uh, we go out and we vet the partners, we educate the partners, and we offer that applications assurance and warranty through our partners. So that warranty doesn't come from them, it comes from us. We stand behind them. And uh, you know, I think you know, those folks out there, the representation of Comscope, they're all around the world, every region of the world. We have about 4,000 of them out there, and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So I think uh, when you look at it, it's the most complete solution. And that's why most people traditionally have and will continue to work with Comscope in that area. And also, if I can add to that, um, what, what, what Stephen just said about the method B and the application assurance, we actually have some things on our homepage right now that are promoting yeah. both of those. So if you wanted to go for more information, definitely go to the homepage, comscope.com, and you can get that there. Um, before we wrap up, we do have one more question. I think yeah. you're going to like this. It has to do with sports. Um, we have a question that said, how, how can broadcasters prepare for the spike in online traffic during the World Cup? <laughs> well, we've, we've been able to handle a few of these things. Um, you know, the, the Super Bowl, when it was in Dallas, mm -hmm. Super Bowl, when it was uh, down in Houston, the, the American football version right. of, uh, you know, I, I guess it's not the World Cup because it's really a, a United States thing there. But um, the first is think about when you go into the venue, what's the first thing someone does when they get the venue? They take a selfie, right? right? They're gonna take a selfie. 
And then uh, during a goal, they take a video. What are they doing? They're uploading it, right? So uh, our folks on the uh, mobility side of this business, they love these venues. And the, and the reason is, is you think about what that venue looks like all of the other days of the year, right? There's, there's nobody in that space. But then all of a sudden, we have 100,000 people come into one space, and they all want to upload. So it's very, very important that the carriers have a very good um, networks, wireless networks to support all these phones. Then what do you think happens with all that wireless? We, ought, we backhaul it off either via microwave or, or fiber, and we get it back. So if I'm a, a venue owner, if I'm a broadcaster, um, my number one thing is to make sure that you know we have built for the capacity that you could have there. Because I will tell you, I... Uh, I got to go to a baseball World Series. I won't mention where it was because since this time, that venue has upgraded to our solution. But I was there, and I was real happy that I was there. And I did the same thing. I took a selfie, took a picture. I couldn't, I couldn't right. upload it. It said I had bars, right? But I had the coverage, but I did not have the capacity. And uh, you know, I think Joe, I think it's it's real good to articulate, you know, the kind of this question about how everything works. Right. We're sitting here looking at a tablet. That's what we're doing. And I don't know if that tablet is connected LTE or Wi-Fi, but I'll, I'll give you kind of where we play in that space and, and why I love this company. Mm -hmm. If that's Wi-Fi, it's gone up to an access point that's connected to a piece of copper, which goes back to a room, connects to a fiber, goes down, and it's somehow gone out to the network over our solutions to the central office. We get to the central office, we've got uh, big fiber frames, high density, we process it, and now it's going out to the world, right? So that's one way that ComScope helps enable this to happen. Second way is maybe you're connected via LTE. That's going to go LTE. It's going to go to our DAS solution inside this building. It's going to backhaul out over a 6A cable to the core. It's going to connect to fiber. It's going to go down, connect to this operator, and it's again going to go out. So I, I love that I get to explain to my friends and my family that if we're at home, it doesn't matter where you are, you're probably using some of our solutions right. today. And it's, uh, it's exciting. And I, I'm excited. I'm not a big... Uh, traditional football fan, but I will tell you, we're running these football contests where, uh, you know, we're with all of our partners and customers, we're trying to pick the scores and, and do everything like that. So uh, I look forward to the World Cup and, and helping those venues out. One thing for sure, Stephen is very passionate about what he does. Stephen, right. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you for joining us today appreciate it. on Facebook Live. Look forward to our uh, next one uh, next Thursday, hopefully. And thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.